Hey everybody, it's Steven, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about classic monster sci-fi and horror movies, of course. Um, a lot of times in interviews I'm asked what are the movies that kind of inspired me when I was growing up to either get into the industry or uh, to be a fan of uh, science fiction and horror. And I'm always surprised when I mention a movie that I think is a classic and the interviewer uh, doesn't know doesn't know the movie or has never heard it or, or seen it. And I think that's probably due to a couple of things. Uh, one, there's a hundred plus years of filmmaking now, uh, which means there's a lot of films to go through. And I don't think they show, they don't show these kinds of movies on TV regularly like they used to. When I was a kid, every Friday night at 1130, I had Fright Theater. And then every Saturday afternoon, there was Creature Feature, which was a, it was a double bill. So I used to see like three monster or science fiction movies a week. Plus I also had this, which was my guide to uh, monsters and science fiction. This is Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. This was, uh, it started being published in the 1950s. A lot of people in the entertainment industry, Steven Spielberg, uh, people like that have been inspired by this magazine. And this particular issue is special to me because it's the very first issue of Famous Monsters that I ever got. I actually traded uh, a kid in school, another Marvel um, comic magazine that I had for this. And one of the things that's uh, also important about this issue is that it has a, uh, an article about uh, these two gentlemen uh, right here at the bottom of the page. That's uh, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Now, at this point, I had already seen Peter Cushing in Island of Terror uh, more than once, but I didn't really know that much about him uh, as a film actor. And Famous Monsters uh, not only had a bunch of photographs, as you can see, Robbie the Robot, uh, Incredible Shrinking Man, Metropolis, uh, they also had information on the actors, uh, the directors, the behind-the-scenes technicians. So you really got to find out a little bit more about these films uh, when they would come on television. Uh, another great thing about Famous Monsters, by the way, were the uh, mail-order ads in the back. Uh, here's uh, like two pages of uh, Super 8 films that you could buy. Um, none of these are the, the entire film. They're uh, digest versions that run about 15 minutes, but they were way better than not having anything at all. Or, waiting for something to come on TV. Uh, one of the other things they had in here that everybody coveted were the, uh, the famous um, Don Post Studios uh, monster masks. They had the Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Mole People, Frankenstein. Uh, these things were $39.95 a piece, which was a heck of a lot of money. Uh, so anyway, if you had, uh, back in the day, if you had Famous Monsters Magazine and TV Guide, you were pretty set to start uh, watching movies and kind of like filling out your library of uh, the things that you've seen. So I thought what I would do today is uh, let you see some of the films that I have in my collection that I think are noteworthy or classics of some sort. They might have uh, an actor or a performance in it that I really like, or they might have some special effects that are really cool, and uh, or it might just be a, a premise or a story that I think is really worth, uh, it's watch really worth watching. So let's go take a look at some DVDs. So, welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted vault of horror. Actually, this is there's a lot more than just horror in here, and this is uh, part of my DVD collection. Now, I have a lot of DVDs because I keep a lot of them around for voice reference and things like that. But uh, so let's start with uh, a DVD that was on the cover of the Famous Monsters uh, issue that I showed you, and that movie is Asylum. Now, this was done by a company called Amicus, who made uh, a lot of these kinds of horror anthology movies. All of these uh, uh, films that they made uh, had like three or four stories that were tied together by a common thread uh, of some sort. Uh, this one is directed by uh, Roy Ward Baker. Uh, probably the most famous uh, movie that uh, Amicus did was uh, Tales from the Crypt. Now this particular movie uh, stars Peter Cushing in one of the stories. It's, uh, it's an interesting little uh, chapter he has in there. He plays a, a father that's trying to uh, get a suit tailored for his son, and the suit is made out of a very special material. Uh, some of the other people in this movie are Charlotte Rampling, uh, Barry Morse, uh, Herbert Lom is in this. Uh, you might remember Herbert Lom from uh, The Dead Zone. He played the doctor, and uh, he was also uh, Chief Inspector Dreyfus in the uh, Pink Panther movies, you know, the guy with the, uh, the twitching eye. So, um, yeah, check out the Amicus uh, collection of uh, horror anthologies. They're all actually pretty good. Next, uh, let's take a look at a classic film. This is the original... 
Invisible Man, starring Claude Rains and directed by James Whale, the same man who directed uh, the original Frankenstein. This movie is really remarkably well done in uh, terms of the special effects. Uh, you have to remember in 1933 when this was made, sound film had only been around for like six years. So uh, one of the great scenes in this is uh, where uh, Claude Rains unwraps his head, takes the bandages off and the glasses, and it's, it's worth it just to see that scene. Uh, next up, uh, a lot of people know that I like uh, Japanese monster movies, Godzilla in particular. Now this is not Godzilla, this is a Japanese monster called Gamera. Now this is not the Gamera from the 1960s. Those are the, uh, the kids films that uh, you may have seen uh, made fun of on Mystery Science Theater 3000. This is the, uh, the reboot of that series done in the late 90s and uh, it's not for kids at all. It's really violent and could be pretty scary for the little ones. There are three movies in this trilogy, uh, Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, Attack of the Legion, and Revenge of Iris. And uh, the third one in particular, uh, some people believe is one of the best uh, kaiju films ever made. Uh, the kaiju films are the Japanese monster movies. Uh, as you can see, this is on Blu-ray, and uh, actually it's a very inexpensive set, so I highly recommend that one. Next up is a, uh, an interesting little film called Frankenstein the True Story. This was a made-for-TV movie that was shown in the 1970s. It's three hours long. It was actually shown over several nights. It has a great cast. It has uh, James Mason playing Dr. Polidori and uh, Michael Sarazen as the creature and Jane Seymour as the bride of Frankenstein. Now when this came out they were touting it as being more uh, faithful to Mary Shelley's novel. Uh, in some ways it is, in other ways it's not, but uh, it's a really interesting sort of take on the Frankenstein story and it has a couple of incredibly gruesome scenes that I'm surprised they uh, got away with showing in the 1970s. I think they might have cut one of them out uh, on the repeat showings. And then last, um, I'm a big fan of Ray Harryhausen's stop-motion films. Now, Ray Harryhausen is known primarily for his films like Jason and the Argonauts, which has the famous uh, fight with the seven skeletons and the Sinbad movies. This is one of his lesser-known films. It's called The Valley of Guanji. came out in 1969. This is actually a western where these cowboys find a, a hidden valley that's full of dinosaurs. And uh, if you've ever seen the movie Jurassic Park, You'll see some scenes in here that they kind of paid homage to in, uh, in Jurassic Park. Uh, this isn't one of Harryhausen's best films, uh, but it does have some of his best dinosaur models in it. There's a Styracosaurus and Allosaurus and Pteranodon, and uh, there's actually an Eohippus in here, if you know what that is. So I think that's kind of a good start here. There's some movies that you uh, may not have known about or you may not have seen, but... Uh, that's kind of episode one of uh, the classics here. I hope uh, that's kind of uh, giving you some things to put on your list of uh, stuff to watch. So until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.